ice cream. There are so many flavors out there, and I have to say, I'm a sucker for most of them, but it turns out there are a lot of ice cream flavors out there that most people would never touch. The other day while doing some research, it was actually for something completely separate than ice cream, I stumbled across all the craziest ice cream flavors. And let me just tell you, there are some really weird ones. I saw a lot of ice cream flavors with certain types of cheese, whether it was cheddar, goat cheese, Parmesan, or blue cheese. Then people also seem to be obsessed with things like charcoal, which I don't even think has any flavor. I'm not exactly sure what this flavor is supposed to be. And I think the craziest one of all came from Maine. It was a lobster ice cream. So I finally just decided I had to give some of these a try. So with all of that being said, we've compiled a wide range of ingredients to make and taste some of the weirdest ice cream flavors on the planet. Right here we have a live lobster, which of course we're gonna use to make that lobster ice cream that they seem to love in Maine. I think we're gonna name this little guy Larry. Then we're gonna try things like mustard and cheese. Then there's this place called Big Gay Ice Cream that even had Cheetos ice cream. And then of course we have to try our higher end weird ice creams. Like this balsamic I have straight from Italy or a white truffle ice cream. Who knows, it could be good. But first I will show you how to make the easiest and most delicious vanilla ice cream base on the planet. But hold on just a second. Before we move forward, I'm gonna ask you to toss a quick like on this video. If all of you watching right now, just smack that like button. I cannot possibly tell you how much it helps us out. So please hit that like button and now let's get going. Now I'm gonna be doubling up this recipe so that I have enough ice cream to make all these crazy flavors. But to start, I'm gonna go in with four cups of heavy cream. By the way, as a hack, each of these little things right here is exactly two cups. Next, we'll do two cups of whole milk, followed by one cup of granulated sugar, and last but not least, the tiniest little pinch of salt. Bring this to a simmer and let that sugar dissolve. While the sugar's dissolving, separate out 12 egg yolks. Set the whites aside and use those however you want later. Now we'll whisk up all those yolks till they're just a bit lighter in color. And then as we whisk, slowly pour in some of that hot milk mixture. We're doing this so that the eggs don't cook. Then once those eggs have come up to temperature, we'll pour this back into the whole mixture together. And then we'll let this slowly cook until the mixture coats the back of a wooden spoon. Then we'll just strain this into a bowl over an ice bath in case we got any egg pieces in there. And then we let our ice cream base cool. It's time to pour in our custard ice cream base. So thick and creamy. Oh my God, that's so creamy. And here we go. After a little while, our ice cream is ready, but just you wait. We're about to do some crazy, crazy things with this ice cream. Now it's finally time for our first amazing scoop of ice cream, and just look at that vanilla. Into our bowl we go, and our first flavor that we'll be tasting today is, drum roll please, breast milk. Manny, pull him out. It was at this moment that Nick knew he had messed up. But in all seriousness, our first flavor today is blue cheese ice cream, which just the smell alone makes me really turned off from. Apparently there are many weirdos out there that love blue cheese ice cream, so I'm gonna taste it right now. I mean, what's not to love? It's all dairy, right? Some of it's just a little bit moldy and stinky. In we go with our first taste of weird ice cream, all of which I'm gonna be ranking today. Of course, on a scale out of 10. Let's take a bite. No. <laughs> I don't know if you could tell on that one. I was trying really, really hard to at least savor it a little bit, but it was disgusting. Those two things separately, totally fine for me. But when I started slightly biting down on those chunks of cheese, I couldn't do it. That one's gonna get a clean 1.5 out of 10. Boom, there's our first rating. Next up, we got Cheetos. Now, Cheetos on their own, again, are totally fine. But to start, I'm gonna crush up the ones on the top just a little bit here to get some Cheeto dust, then pour those on top of my ice cream, garnished, of course, with just a little bit more Cheeto. I have to say, this is one of the weirder looking ice creams I have ever seen, but let's try. Yup, I am totally here for it and for one particular reason. It's actually really good. Before I say anything else, clean seven out of 10. Cheetos, if you think about it, have a sweet corn flavor on the inside. Then there's just a little bit of cheesy dust and their texture is fantastic. So this ice cream has a beautiful color and texture, not to mention the fact that it's essentially sweet corn ice cream. I thought I was gonna hate this one and I liked it. Next up, smoked salmon. We've all enjoyed some smoked salmon or lox on a bagel for Sunday brunch, but how about ice cream? I'll take a nice big hunk of my salmon, then break this up over the the top of my ice cream. Let's take a nice big even piece with everything on it. Smells nice and smoky and fishy. And down the hatch we go. I'm gonna say this. I feel like I got really lucky on this one. I will start by saying that it tastes absolutely terrible. I mean, seriously bad. But there's something weird about it where you get all the ice cream that melts in your mouth first and all that vanilla and cream goes down and then you go into that fish flavor and texture. The fish is oily and fatty. So I don't know what it is about it, but it kind of waits till the end to kick in. Either way, the flavors definitely cross pretty hard in the middle of that bite. And I'm gonna give this one a three out of 10. Next flavor up, and it doesn't sound so bad, popcorn. Buttered popcorn to be precise. But first I gotta pop this. There is nothing like a fresh steamed bag of popcorn. But the real question for us today is how does it pair with ice cream? First onto my ice cream, I'll add a few bits of popcorn and then some butter extract for that extra buttery flavor. I do wanna first mix this one around to get it well combined and then 
I got way too big a bite of butter extract at the start, but this one is fantastic. And if Ice Cream Blazes could find a way to keep that popcorn really crispy for that unique added texture and chew, I would like it even better. But this might be one of those ones that's only good fresh. So I'm gonna give it just a small edge over the Cheetos at 7.7 .7 out of 10. At this point, we haven't done cheese for a little while. So I wanna jump back to some cheddar cheese, but specifically this kind of cheese whiz stuff that people seem to like. Apparently this is a thing that some weirdos out there put on their ice cream, which just like the blue cheese thing, I don't understand. On we go with that cheese whiz. I'll give it a nice little mix to well combine this ice cream. By the way, this is of course why I did soft serve so I could do this. <laughs> I really don't wanna do this, but I'll give it a taste. Hold on, this definitely doesn't go above Cheetos. And I know this cheese whiz craft is all totally fake, but I think dairy on dairy just works really well with ice cream because this is better than most of the things we've just tried. I'm only gonna give it a four out of 10. And out of everything we tried, I was most scared to taste this one, but it really wasn't bad. In fact, if I had a weird craving for it, I might actually kind of like it. Next up, I got a fresh scoop of ice cream for a fresh bottle of yellow mustard. First, let's give this a nice even coating of mustard. Aesthetically, it's not all that bad. And I'm not even gonna think about it on this one. I'm just gonna go. Don't put mustard on your ice cream. For some reason, this stuff is really kind of acidic. It's got this really strange tart flavor that I just could not get over. And suddenly I just had this weird bite in my mouth. American flavor in a bottle. That may be true, but it doesn't go on ice cream. Next up, this is a weird trend all over the place, but I'm going into my bowl with some charcoal powder. For first glance, it looks amazing, almost like a cookies and cream. And lately I've been seeing this all over the place, especially with soft serve ice cream at different places. If I'm being completely honest, the color is really, really appealing to me. It's almost a really unique gray color. But why do people eat charcoal ice cream? Let's see if we can figure that out. Oh, it's like eating sand. Do you hear that? Oh my God, it's all over me. My tongue back. What the? <laughs> Flat five out of 10. You're chomping out a bunch of small minerals. I just don't understand it. It doesn't really change that much. And if anything, it makes it a little bit worse because your teeth get stained black as does your tongue. Not for me. People love hot sauce on everything these days. And apparently that also holds true for ice cream. I know you all know that I don't have a very good heat tolerance. So this is one of those clear instances where I'm doing it for you. Let's go. Ice cream with sriracha is not that bad. It gives this little tang, it gives it a little pop. Ice cream is fatty and creamy, and the perfect thing to cut it is that spice. And sriracha just has this great flavor outside the heat that it provides too. So putting something unique in the ice cream like that is actually really cool. I know I don't like heat, but I'm actually gonna give this one a seven out of 10. If you like spicy things, I think you should try it. This next one I'm somewhat excited for because I do love a good creamsicle, but orange juice and ice cream supposedly go well together. Think about it this way. It's like combining sherbet or sorbet with regular vanilla or custard based ice cream. Cream. That's exactly what a creamsicle is. So I don't see how this wouldn't be delicious. I'll go in with a little bit of that OJ and I immediately notice that it curdles because of the acid mixing with the cream, but I'm gonna try it anyway. Mm. Just like I thought, mixing just a little bit of orange juice with your ice cream makes something fantastic. It is a creamsicle in ice cream scoop form. Nine out of 10. Now while we take a little pause here, we're gonna prepare a few separate things for our next couple flavors. First things first, and I know you're all really excited for this one, lobster ice cream. I'll be honest, I've tried it one time before in Maine when I was a little kid, but I totally forget what it tasted like. So we're doing it again today. With the lobster, we're just gonna rip off that tail and use some of that claw meat as well. When you clean a lobster, do it over a towel to pick up all those juices. I'm allergic to lobster and shellfish in general, so this is not the brightest move by me, but I'm gonna try it for you. I don't really wanna say much about this lobster ice cream. I'm just gonna give it a taste and I'm gonna give you an honest opinion. I really don't wanna do this. I will rate it by saying this. Some things in this world are meant to be and some things are not. If you couldn't tell from my face, this was not. This is going to get the lowest score today, a one out of 10. And it's not just because I'm allergic to lobster. In fact, I love lobster, but ice cream and lobster, they don't go together. Our next flavor we're doing is corn. And I know that sounds pretty general and corn ice cream can certainly be delicious, but I'm talking about the people out there, you know who you are, who will literally just chop up a bunch of corn and put it in their ice cream. By the way, if you want to cut corn off the cob, do it like this. It doesn't shoot everywhere, but if you're holding the cob vertically, it will. Quick little side note here, but I'm a huge fan of eating corn on the cob just raw. Delicious. Now this ice cream right here looks really, really good. And I think the texture is gonna be fantastic. Also, when you bite into raw corn, it almost has a milk that comes out of it. It's this really starchy water that's really delicious. But of course, the question of the day is how will this all taste together? So similar to what I predicted, that milk comes out of the corn and actually makes for a really good milky light corn flavor that blends with the rest of the ice cream. And to be honest, you really don't taste it until the end. It's all for texture. So I'm gonna give this gut reaction six out of 10. I'd eat it, but I wouldn't go out of my way to have it. I love a good scoop of peanut butter. And unless you're allergic to nuts, I'm sure you don't mind ice cream with peanut butter in it. In fact, a lot of people love it. But today we're gonna be trying peanut butter and jelly all mixed together in one really unique ice cream. Mmm. Why do I do stuff like that? I hate myself.
9.4 out of 10. No more words needed. Peanut butter and jellies alone are great. Without crust, they're great. Peanut butter and jellies by themselves are great. But in ice cream, it's even better. 9.4 out of 10, everybody. Next up, some good old Parmigiano Reggiano for my people out there in Italy. Now, I would have gone into this with a pretty negative attitude if I'd hated those first two, but it just so happened that I kind of like them. So this is gonna be interesting. Just giving you proof that I put enough Parmesan on there. Depending on how much cheese you put, it's very subtle, and it may require a slightly more sophisticated palate, i.e. I don't think any kids are gonna love this, but I am here for it. 7.8 out of 10. That's a pretty good rating for Parmesan cheese and vanilla ice cream. For now, I'm gonna continue my way through Italy and put some balsamic on top of my vanilla. This too is actually something people do. I'll make sure I get plenty of balsamic on this bite as well. Ugh. What the hell? That right there, I can tell you right now, is one that I would never, never understand. And seriously, don't think I could ever like. I am sadly gonna toss this low on the list with a flat, clean three out of 10. Not the worst thing we've tasted, so it cannot possibly get a rating as low as that lobster, but it is not high on the rankings at all. Next up, we have foie gras, which if you didn't know, is duck liver. I'm just gonna take a little bit of that foie gras oil on my ice cream, because we really don't need all that much for the flavor here. Here we go. No. So if you've never had foie gras before, it's this really, really decadent, fatty, slightly controversial product, but it is a favorite for many people out there. Because of its fattiness and its unique flavor, if you do like liver, foie gras and ice cream is a pretty fantastic combination, in my opinion. But I'll take off a little bit given the controversy behind it, because they do force feed ducks to make it happen, and I'll give it a five out of 10. Not something I'm gonna totally recommend, but something that actually works from a culinary standpoint. To finish everything off today, I'm gonna do a white truffle ice cream. Something a little bit fancy to see how it works. Because this will naturally be savory, I'm gonna go in with some white truffle salt as well. For this one, I have absolutely no idea whether I'll love or hate it, but I think it's gonna be one of either of those. I hate it. I hate it. That white truffle ice cream is not gonna get a high rating in my books. It's sort of like asking someone to like a mushroom ice cream. That's what it is. These were all super weird combos, but there were two clear standouts in all of the ice creams that I tried today. In first place, I've gotta give it to peanut butter and jelly. That was seriously insane. Next time you're at home and you have some boring vanilla ice cream, add a little bit of peanut butter and a little bit of jelly. I'm telling you right now, it will rock your world. And if you're in the position that you have vanilla but no PB&J, add the next best flavor we tried today, a little bit of orange juice. In just a few seconds, you will literally be eating an orange creamsicle out of a bowl and it will be delicious. Now, again, don't forget to toss a like on the video, please. It helps us out so, so much. And I know not all of you are doing it. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button because we have some really, really cool videos coming up. I'm not gonna give away any secrets, but I am super, super excited. I literally cannot wait. I'm gonna go eat some more cheese covered ice cream.